As part of our celebration of WGN's 75th anniversary, we're going back through the archives to see how the city has changed over the years. In today's WGN at 75, WGN's Mike Lowe looks at how Chicago's most visited location transformed from pavement to parkland. The Bean, the Crown Fountains, the Christmas Tree. Chicago's Millennium Park is where the city comes to meet and marvel. The Civic Jewel opened in 2004. Its 25 acres of gardens and sculptures attract 25 million people a year, making it the top tourist destination in the Midwest. But did you know this part of Chicago's front lawn used to be a parking lot? The Illinois Central Railroad owned the right of way from 1852 to 1997. The rest of the land was a gravel parking lot. In 1871, the Chicago White Stockings, the team that eventually was renamed the Cubs, played games at the site. Later that year, the grounds were destroyed in the Great Chicago Fire. It's been reported that Mayor Richard M. Daley was sitting in his dentist's chair on Michigan Avenue overlooking the eyesore when he thought a park would be better than a parking lot. We took an eyesore, we turned it into a showplace of architecture, arts, and a grand public space that will be the envy of any other city in the world. Back in 2014 on the park's 10th anniversary, I'm Steve Sanders from WGN News. WGN's Steve Sanders took viewers on a tour of Millennium Park. Watch out for this one little step here. So we're at the highest elevation in Pritzker Pavilion. Offering rarely seen views of Chicago. Ed Euler takes us on a tour few will ever see. Across a catwalk, 60 feet above the Pritzker stage, and a view of Lake Michigan you can't get anywhere else. This gives you the grand vision. Euler was handpicked by Mayor Richard M. Daley to be the project design director and master planner for Millennium Park. This time takes us inside the 50 foot high crown fountain. And this is the only way to get in and out through this hatch. So you see water cascading down all four sides right now. The LEDs, which have the faces on them, are behind us. So it's really, in effect, like a giant TV. Ed Euler's own face is one of the thousand Chicagoans who appear randomly and spit water. He says the city recruited community people to represent Chicago's demographics, acquired the Star Wars movie camera, and the director took it from there. They put you in a, in a dentist chair, actually, so you had to keep your head very still. They would uh, tell you to blink, or at the very end of your taping, they would say, pretend you're blowing out a candle. A place for kids instead of cars. You could say the city planners hit it out of the park. That was a transition. We're going to have a special coverage for you of our 75th every Thursday night through April on the WGN News at 9. We also have a special section for you. You'll find it on our website, wgntv.com slash 75.